Hi guys, it's Kay Elizabeth and I am here with Vlogmas Day 6 and I'm going to be doing the Holly Jolly Holiday Tag Part 1. So the first question is, favorite Christmas movie? I actually have three. Uh, Home Alone, just because, you know, it's classic. It's a movie I have been watching since I was a little kid and it is just, you know, hands down hilarious. I also like the Santa Claus with Tim Allen just because I've always been a fan of his and um, he's good in family movies like he really nails the part of being the family man um, whenever he plays it so I enjoy that. Also National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation that movie is classic. It is hilarious as well. Um, I don't know anybody who doesn't like that movie, so those are my top three favorites. Next question, are you on the naughty or nice list? I am on the nice list. Um, life is too short to walk around being mean and doing things against me enough to get on the naughty list. Have you ever had a white Christmas? Maybe when I was a kid, but as an adult, no. So far, it snowed a few days before Christmas and then the day after Christmas. Never Christmas Day. Where do you usually spend your holiday? Uh, currently, we stay home. Um, I have two kids and my husband usually has to work either Christmas Day or the day after. So, um, we just kind of like to spend Christmas Day all together and just get in as much time as we can, enjoying each other's company and celebrating just his birthday. Play or sing your favorite Christmas song. Um, my favorite Christmas song is the song that's playing now. This is the instrumental version, but it's the first note with. Do you open presents on Christmas Eve? No, but I think it's a great um, tradition to start just, um, I don't know, I guess on the days or the years when my husband has to work Christmas Day, maybe open a gift on Christmas Eve at work just because, you know, if he has to work Christmas Day, then that morning he's trying to really sleep in and, you know, get his sleep for work later on that night. So that might be something we look into doing on the years where we know he'll be working Christmas Day. Can you name all of Santa's reindeers? No. <laughs> I was trying to do it earlier and you know, I can get Donner, Cupid, is it Comet, Blitz, and Dasher, Donner, and that's it. And of course Rudolph. And that's it. Um, what holiday tradition are you looking forward to the most this year? I mean, honestly, I guess watching Christmas movies and decorating the tree is really our only holiday Christmas traditions that we do year after year. Um, last year, we started a tradition of making a birthday cake for Jesus to commemorate his birthday. So I guess that's what I am most looking forward to this year because my daughter helps with that. It was her idea. And so I'm, I guess I'm, that's what I'm most looking forward to because, you know, that's bonding time for me and her and also just getting the time to talk to her more about our faith. Is your Christmas tree real or fake? <laughs> it is fake, as you guys can see. I want a real tree because I have grown up always having a real tree up until I went off to college and then my mom started throwing up fake trees. But as a kid, we always had a real tree, and that's something I really want my kids to experience um, before, you know, they're grown up and off to college. But my husband is uh, really sensitive to the smell, so they kind of make him gag and make him lightheaded and woozy. So we have not managed to have one since we live in such a small space. But once we move to a bigger space, maybe something with a sunroom, we'll put a real tree out there. Hands down, what's your all-time favorite holiday food and sweet treat? My favorite holiday food for Christmas is glazed ham. I love pork. <laughs> so, the glazed ham is definitely what I go for first um, at Christmas dinner. And since we uh, stay home, <laughs> I don't have anyone to fight with to get to the glazed ham. And sweet treat, I love fruitcake. I know some people are just like, they can't do fruitcake. 
I can bring it on as long as it's not hard as a rock and uh, you've put the right amount of sweetener in there I can do fruitcake do you like giving gifts or receiving gifts I actually like giving gifts um, I grew up really poor and I was blessed enough to have people who uh, saw my family in need and gave to us over during the holiday season and so I like to really you know give to as many people as I can so you know giving is definitely I guess one of my favorite parts of Christmas just seeing the way their face lights up and um, it's not so much that their face is lighting up because of the gift it's the fact that you thought enough about them to give them the gift and I don't know, it, it's the greatest feeling in the world, like, I can't put into words, you know, how I feel when someone realizes, you know, she actually, you know, thought about me. So, giving is definitely what I like to do. Show us your tackiest Christmas attire. I have no Christmas attire. Um, no Christmas dresses, no ugly Christmas sweater, no Christmas socks, no wacky elf hats, like... I don't know, I just don't buy holiday clothing. I like my clothing to be worn year round, but I do think I might invest in some kind of festive sweater after Christmas when the sales are on a popping. What would your dream place to visit for the holiday season be? Um honestly probably Paris or Italy somewhere. Um just because both of those places have really great food and then you know Paris is like the city of love it's all romantic and so is Italy the Italian culture is really um, kind of family focused and uh, they're all about love and passion and so one of those two places does your family have a special holiday recipe that you like to help make no, <laughs> we do not have any special holiday recipe. Um, everything we cook for the holidays, you could find us eating at a Sunday dinner. <laughs> so we don't have any recipes that are reserved just for the holidays. Are you a pro present rapper or do you feel miserable? I'm somewhere in between. I'm not quite Martha Stewart, but then, you know, I'm not... Uh, my present doesn't exactly look like a five-year-old wrapped it, so I'm somewhere in the middle. Most miserable holiday moment. Mm. Most miserable holiday moment is an emotional one for me. It was probably Christmas 07, and uh, I got a phone call from um, my sister and she had gotten to a altercation with her husband and he had kind of uh, just really beat her up for the bad Christmas day and just being so far away I felt so helpless and you know she's crying over the phone and you know uh, my niece was a baby then and you can hear her crying in the background and she's running down the street and at first, I was just like, what is going on? Why are you out of breath? And she told me everything that happened. And she's like, you know, I'm running down the street with, you know, my baby in my arms. And she finally knocked on the door of uh, these people like a block away. Like, she ran a whole block. And she got on the porch and knocked on the door and told them what happened. And they let her in and let her call the cops. But it was like, you know, as she was going up the porch, there was her psycho ex-husband riding down the street in his truck chasing after her so that by far was or is the most miserable holiday moment for me just because I felt so helpless being these thousands of miles away from her and just knowing that that's how she and my niece had to spend their well my niece's first Christmas because she was a baby it was it was awful like I can't even put into words what was going through my mind at that moment and then you know I was the first person she called obviously so then you know I had to then call and break that news to my mom and then call my dad and it was crazy nobody wants to get that news on Christmas so that 
tops it. Um, since then, I don't think I've had... What made you realize the truth about Santa? I think I realized the truth about Santa um, just when... Um, I don't know, one year I had asked Santa for something and I didn't get it and like I was super upset and I just kept complaining and complaining about it to my mom and she was she just finally came out and told me like, you know, Santa's not real and I was crushed, like I was <laughs> livid. Um I couldn't believe it. I was just like, you know, you're supposed to be my parents and you guys are sitting here, you know, they're sitting here lying to me all these years. So I was crushed. I was probably Maybe I was in first grade, maybe first grade or at the end of kindergarten, but yeah, I was, I was crushed, like, I don't know, I felt like I had wasted my time believing in this guy who wasn't real, and I, am, I am the kind of person, and was the kind of person even then, to where I would rather you tell me the truth than find out you told me a lie. And it took me a while to really get over that and feel like I could trust anything else my parents said from that point on. Um, I definitely would have been okay if they would have been like, you know, Santa's not real, he's a fictional character, you know. That would have been totally cool because, you know, my daughter never believed in Santa. She was all like, no, nah, he can't be real. Santa does not come down the chimney. So, but she's totally fine with him just being a fictional character. Like, she still likes to get her picture taken with Santa. She still likes to write uh, Santa a letter. I'm, her Christmas isn't any less magical than any other child who does believe that Santa is actually real. So, I just wish my parents would have um, thought enough about, you know, that to tell me the truth. Because, you know, I just feel like... They should have known my personality better to know that I wouldn't take finding out that Santa wasn't real well. <laughs> so, you know, my daughter's kind of the same way, so I don't lie to her. Um, I don't think my son really gets it. Um, right now, he's kind of scared of anything that looks like Santa. So, yeah, we're not going to teach him that Santa is real because, really, Santa's not real. Santa's really, you know, me and my husband. So, that's what we're going to go with. Do you make New Year's resolutions and do you stick to them? Yes, I know a lot of people say that New Year's resolutions are a waste of time, but that's not true. It's um, really a list of goals that you want to accomplish for the next year. And I think it's smart to go into a new year with a list of goals and things that you are challenging yourself to accomplish. I think if you're going into the new year like, oh, I'm just going to wing it then you know when the end of the year rolls around and you look back and you haven't accomplished much that was because you were too busy winging it i think it's smart even if it's not like you know anything to do with your business life but to set goals for your personal life whether it's getting um, closer to god or spending more time with family uh, spending less time on social media uh, thinking more positive thoughts learning how to cook um, just set some goals. Um, nothing bad can come from it and just because you set goals at the beginning of the year doesn't mean if two days after the new year and you know you're sitting down and you're like oh I want to do this. Add it to the list. But don't just kind of go into the new year with nothing. You know challenge yourself to do something. Um, you know we're always talking about we want to see other people change, but if you're not challenging yourself to do things to change yourself first, then really you don't have any room to be complaining about what other people need to change. So that's my take on that, and I do like to do a vision board to go with it. Then I like to hand write each goal out and then go back and write how I'm going to accomplish that goal. Go back again, list the people in my inner circle who I know can either help me with that goal or who can possibly connect me with somebody else who can assist me with it if I need help with something and then I'll go back again and give myself a specific deadline like I want to accomplish this by February or I want to accomplish this in six months and go from there. And the last question is 
what makes the holiday special for you? Um, hands down, my family and my faith. Um, just knowing that I'm celebrating um, the fact that Jesus was born is uh, amazing. You know, he did so much for us. I mean, he made the ultimate sacrifice. He gave up his life for us. And celebrating that is the least I can do for him. You know, I'm not perfect 365, you know, like anybody else, I make mistakes and I fall down. And just knowing that he died just so I can be forgiven for those mistakes, the least I can do is celebrate and give him even more thanks on his birthday than I do any other day of the year. And just spending time with my family is really great. Um, just because family is really, aside from my faith, the most important thing in my life. My family has been there for me through thick and thin for the most part. And my kids have really changed me. I always say that um, my daughter saved me from when I was in a dark period in my life. And just, you know... Having these holidays to make memories with her and my son and my husband and whoever else we will celebrate with for the holidays is really awesome because, you know, as the years go by and they have their own families, that's all me and my husband are going to have to look back on because, you know, they might have their own traditions and, you know, I want to respect that and so... By far, um, family and faith are what make the holidays most special for me. And that is it for this tag. Um, so, if you have not done the Holly Jolly Holiday Tag Part 1, I am challenging you to do this tag. And when you do film it and get it all uploaded, be sure to come back here and link your tag below in the comment section. And I will stop by and watch it. Until then, I will see you tomorrow for day 7. Bye.